Good evening, everyone. Um, my name is Melissa Raspberry, and I work for the American Institutes for Research. Um, we have the honor and privilege of being the managers and facilitators of the CS for All Teachers community, um, and we're glad to be with you here tonight. Um, we are so excited uh, to present this webinar. We did it once similar to this back in July, where um, we shared some ideas about how to find funding and support for your CS classroom, and things went really well. Um, so we decided to revisit this conversation again because we know that's not a topic that <laughs> goes out of style, if you will. Um, we're very excited tonight to have some representatives from DonorsChoose.org um, as well as from the CS for All Consortium. In addition to a classroom teacher that has used the resources um, available at DonorsChoose.org um, and from her own um, volition, to successfully secure funding and support for her classroom. And so we're happy to have both of these organizations as well as a practitioner represented with us tonight um, to be part of this wonderful dialogue. As I mentioned earlier, if you were um, online with us, we do encourage you to chat during this conversation. Some of you have already gotten started. It's always great to see um, where people are represented and where they come from. So thank you so much for putting those introductions into the chat window. You're welcome to do that throughout the evening. Um, but you're also welcome to stop and ask questions if you have them. Um, we'll, we're going to do this as sort of a Q&A where I'll be facilitating the conversation with Jimmy and Kirk and Takia. Um, but we want you to chime in as well. We'll provide some Q&A time at the end, but if there's something that someone is talking about and you're really interested and want to ask a clarifying question, um, then do feel free to let us know. Um, if you can either you know, post something, I'll be looking in the chat window, or there's a feature at the top of your screen on the top toolbar where it's a raise hand function. Um, it literally looks like a person with their hand raised. So you can simply click on that to get our attention to make sure that we know that you want to speak. Um, if you have not done so already, we do hope that you will connect um, your audio, either through the microphone in your computer um, or by calling in to the conference line, which again, I'll um, post into the chat window here um, because we want, we want to hear from you. We want to have a great dialogue. So um, with that said, I'll go ahead and get started by providing some introductions. Um, first, I want to introduce to you all Kirk Smiley. Um, Kirk is the Principal Partnerships Director and Development Editor at DonorsChoose.org. He um, has helped the, his team raise over $50 million annually to fund classrooms. That's pretty incredible. I can't wait to hear from Kirk how he does that. Um, he comes from a long lineage of public school educators and is honored to be helping thousands of teachers and students. And academically, his background is he has an MBA from the Craner School of Management. So comes to us with a great deal of experience um, and expertise in helping to secure funding and support for classrooms. So we're so thankful to Kurt for being here with us. Kurt invited along with him Takia Toomer. I was very excited today because Takia and I have a, um, a small world connection. Um, she actually attended school in St. Augustine, Augustine's University, which is in Raleigh, North Carolina, and I live right down the road in Durham. So it was great to, to make that connection. Um, she is a, she's currently a sixth grade reading and language arts teacher at Rosa L. Parks Elementary and Prince George's County Public Schools. As she mentioned earlier, she got a bit of a, well, it was more of an ice day than a snow day today. Um, she's a robotics and STEM coordinator, a Google certified educator, and has successfully won several DonorsChoose.org grants. So um, as I mentioned, she has her bachelor's from St. Augustine University and a master's in counseling from Trinity University. So. We're super glad to have this practitioner here today to share her experience and her wisdom in how to get um, great resources for the classroom. And then finally, we also invited Jumi Song to be part of this conversation. It's a little bit different with what she provides and who she represents, but we thought this was a good fit. It would be a good opportunity to kind of help people understand kind of the broader picture of CS education. Jumi is the Senior Project Manager for the CS for All Consortium. And if you don't know what that is, she'll be telling you about that shortly. She previously worked for 12 years in people operations and program project management at Booz and Company, Booz and Company, and now they're now Strategy and at PwC and the Tower Research Capital. She also recruited for Google, where she joined the New York City Computer Science Education Committee, and that helped to get her connected um, more broadly with the, the CS for All Consortium. And she has her bachelor's degree from Northwestern. I'm hearing a little reverb again, so if I ask if you could please to make sure to mute your line 
um, to help cut back on that, that would be terrific. Thank you. Um, so we have these three amazing guests. And before we get started with the questions, Alex. I'll just start it off and say, Kirk, is there anything? Um, I'll go down the line with Kirk, Takia, and then Jumi. Any kind of opening introductions or information that you would like to share um, with participants before we get started? So Kirk? Sure. I'm just excited to be here. Thanks for, for having us. And uh, yeah, really thrilled to share with you all the opportunities that are out there on DonorsShoes.org to help you get uh, materials you need and potentially the professional development training you need to, um, to teach CS in the classroom. So I'm eager to, to tell you more and answer any and all questions you might have about how you can leverage DonorsShoes.org and our platform to support you and your students. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Um, Takia? Good evening, everyone. Just wanted you to know how awesome Donor's Shoes is. Um, this is my 17th year of teaching, um, my second year using Donor's Shoes, and the second year of my career where I have all of the materials that I dream of having in my classroom because of Donor's Shoes. Wow. That's pretty impressive. I'm excited to hear about that. I don't know that I've ever heard a teacher, another teacher, say that they have all the <laughs> materials that they could need. So, yeah, we have lots to learn from you, Takia. Um, and then finally, Jumi. Hi. Thanks so much. Um, well, I'm very excited to be joining this call. I'm very excited to be able to share um, some of the stuff we're doing through the CSRL Consortium and taking a look at the participant list. And I do see a good handful of um, consortium members on the call. And for those who are not familiar, very excited to um, share what we have to offer with you guys. Thank you, Jimmy. And I see that um, you have a colleague here that's a participant tonight, Leanne Delizer. Thank you for joining us, Leanne. She also works with the CS for All Consortium. So thanks for being here. Um, so as, as you might expect sometimes, as, as, might, as often happens, technology is not on our side tonight. Uh, <laughs> I had a bit of a trouble um, uploading some pieces of the PowerPoint, but we've worked around that. So I'm going to be switching through some, um, a few presentations in just a moment, so I appreciate your patience with that as a workaround. But um, we wanted to start off first, our question number one that we wanted to ask our panel was for them to share a little bit about the kinds of support that the, their organization, DonorsChoose.org, and um, the CS for All Consortium offers for computer science teachers. And specifically, if there's a community that teachers can tap into and ask questions, share problems, feel supported, et cetera. So um, we're going to start off with um, Kirk um, sharing some information. So bear with me as I get his presentation pulled up separately. Um, but Kirk, you're welcome to go ahead and get started. Awesome, thanks. So yeah, you're going to hear about DonorsShoes.org from me, but as you already heard from Takia, you know, it's she's had such a great experience. You're going to learn probably more from her than you even are from me tonight. Um, but for those who don't know, DonorsShoes.org is a web-based nonprofit, and we've been around since 2000. And we exist solely to help public school teachers get materials and experiences they need for their students to teach them. Um, so it's a really kind of simple idea um, that uh, our founder, who was a public school teacher in New York City, built many years ago. And now we've been able to um, serve over 70% of the public schools in the country, um, helping with materials, experiences, field trips, all sorts of different things that any frontline public school educator needs to help teach their students. Um, so real quick overview, um, there's kind of a, a, a three-part um, component to kind of our model. The first is teachers like you um, coming to the site. So teachers, again, anyone at a public school, uh, that includes charter schools, can come to the site and create what we call a classroom project request for what you need. Um, if those are specific classroom materials like um, laptop computers, programmable robots, books, whatever that might be, technology to basic supplies, you can create a project for that on our site. And what we ask teachers to do is first create an account so we know where you're at, and I'll talk about why that's important in a second. We need to know what school you're located at because then you'll kind of create a short project essay describing what you need, and that can just be explaining how your students are going to benefit 
from this particular project, what you're going to teach them. And then you get to go shopping. And our site connects you with um, a bunch of vendors. So this isn't a situation where you have to go out physically, drive to the store, buy some things, get reimbursed. No, you actually get an online shopping cart that connects you to Amazon.com, Best Buy, Staples, all sorts of learning supply companies where you can pick the exact materials you want. And so you put that in your shopping cart, and instead of checking out like you would with a credit card, it puts it into our system so we know exactly what you're requesting and how much your project costs. And then we do a quick screen of your project just to make sure it all matches up that what you're writing about is actually what you requested, and we post it live on our site. We're citizen donors and corporations and foundations from all over the country are looking to support projects like yours. So um, it's kind of that simple, really, for teachers. It might only take 30 minutes and, um, to create a project and, and get it live on our site so that you can kind of leverage uh, the greater community. And one great thing about that is it's not just you know, donors in your own backyard. It's donors from across the country. And so they come to the site looking for a project that inspires them. And they might be someone who's just specifically interested in funding your school, or maybe they even know you as a teacher or their student is in your class. But about half our donors are searching by excuse me, subject area or other things that they're just looking for a project that really speaks to them. Um, so it's kind of a great opportunity to leverage dollars that you really wouldn't have access to otherwise, because odds are you don't know the person who's even donating to your classroom project. Um, and so those donors come, and we also have corporations and foundations doing a lot of really um, amazing partnerships on our site, and that's what my team works with, where um, about half of the, the money we raise each year, so over $50 million, comes from groups doing specific campaigns, and I'll talk about one in a second, um, that might support subjects or projects in a specific state or city or county. Um, and so those are always opportunities you can leverage when you're creating projects on our site. So once people give, your project can get fully funded. And when it does, as a teacher, we say, hey, congratulations, your project's funded. Would you, um, you know, confirm you still indeed want those materials? And we ship them directly to your school. That's why it's important we know where you're teaching. We don't pass through any money. We send those exact supplies. And the donors then get the chance to see that that's where every dime they gave went to support your specific project. And then we just ask that you do a thank you notes for the donors and post photos of your project coming to life. So that's the kind of teacher experience and kind of how the model works. And one thing I really want to emphasize is other than getting supplies for computer science classroom projects, one amazing thing we're doing now because of those corporate partner opportunities I referenced is thanks to the Infosys Foundation USA, we have a special opportunity right now Two for professional development, which is a newer area we're getting involved in to support teacher professional development. And now any teacher that's interested in computer science professional development can choose from uh, about five different um, organizations offering professional development this summer. And uh, those projects are automatically half-funded thanks to Infosys and their commitment to computer science. So not only can you do classroom materials, but there's also this really great opportunity if you're looking for better CS professional development to attend uh, things. I think we even have um, at least one rep uh, from one of the professional development organizations from, from UTeach on the phone with the call too, but there, there are a variety to choose from. And to learn more about that, you can go to help.donorschoose.org and search Infosys, and you'll see those opportunities come up um, and what you might be able to participate in this summer. And again, that's hugely thanks to uh, Infosys Foundation USA coming along and, and making your, these projects cost half as much to citizen donors with their generous grant. So that's, that's kind of one tangible next step um, that hopefully you all can take advantage of. And if it's not professional development, it's getting technology or you know, anything you might need for your students for the classroom, stuff that will be in the students' hands too. Thank you so much, Kirk. There are a couple of questions that are in the um, chat window that I'd like to go ahead and address before we move forward so we don't lose that in the conversation. One comes from Philip about how can other PD providers become part of that list? I'm assuming a part of the list that's, that's um, with the PD um, partnership that you mentioned, but please correct me if I'm wrong there, Philip. Yep. So Kirk, could yeah, you address sure. that, please? 
Great, yeah. Great question. So this is just our second year now doing uh, kind of our professional development expansion and kind of a, a big thing behind it is this computer science professional development campaign. So right now we just have five specific organizations, but um, Philip, I'm, I'm Kirk, K-I-R-K, at donorschoose.org. Definitely reach out, shoot me an email. I'd love to learn more about what you're doing. Right now, this year, we're probably going to keep it just to those five, but I think there's definitely opportunity in the future as we expand our professional development program to include a lot more um, PD opportunities, and including those that aren't just necessarily over the summer, but might be throughout the school year. Thank you. And Kirk, the, is the correct um, web address help.donorschoose.org and then search for emphasis? Yeah, it is. I wish I had a better vanity URL right now, but that takes you to kind of our, our FAQ and Help Center. And if you type emphasis in the, the search bar, you'll see a link to this overall campaign um, through that. But that's probably your best place right now to, to learn about it. Okay, thank you. We also had a question from Jill. She said she's a public school teacher and her mini programmers, I just love hearing that, are public school students. However, they're a community-based group. Does that disqualify her from donors choose? That is a great question, Jill. So um, anyone who's employed by a public school and who works directly with students, so teachers, guidance counselors, um, even if you're a teacher and a coach, things like that, you can use DonorsChoose.org and create a classroom project. We really are restricting it so that principals and administrators don't because we want it to be those frontline educators who, who are with the students and therefore ultimately in charge of those materials and you know, getting those into the classroom. So even if it's um, a program where you're bringing you know, an organization into your public school or, but it's through the public school and you yourself are the teacher, you can use um, donorshoes.org and create a project. So it sounds like, Jill, I think you, you should qualify fine because you're a public school teacher. Jill responded back and said she's a central office resource teacher. I'm wondering, Jill, is this an after school program or at a community center? Um, you're welcome to grab the mic and go ahead and uh, voice your question if you are. Sure. Can you guys hear me okay? This is Jill. Okay, great. Um, yes, go ahead. So I work for um, Baltimore County Public Schools as a central office resource teacher. However, I live in Carroll County, and my son goes to Carroll County Schools. Um, Baltimore County is a very tech-centric, forward-thinking, forward-moving district. Carroll County is very tech-conservative. And so I knew that my son would not, and his friends, would not have the... Um, ability, they would not be exposed to computer science in the elementary school level. And so I thought, well, then mommy can do that for you and your friends. So I got trained by code.org and we, I formed a community group. So we have about 16 kids that meet every single week. I don't charge them anything. So I'm not charging them for my time, but in order for it to be equitable, I really need to be able to provide the equipment that my kids need to, um, to be able to fully participate. So what what I find is difficult is finding funding that is available for community-based groups. So I'm not affiliated with a school. I work for a public school system. My kids go to a different public school system. Um, but ultimately, you know, I, I'm, I'm working with them and seeing them every single week. So does that clarify it for you? Thanks for that, Jill. Yeah, thanks yeah. for that, Jill. Um, yeah, I totally. Um, so what I'd recommend is ask that school where where you live and where your son goes um, to, to connect with a teacher at that school who could be kind of the sponsor for the program and who would be, you know, again, ultimately responsible for those materials and making sure they get allocated correctly because that's kind of what we ask the teacher to do, right? We don't want them getting stolen or going to, I don't know, a different school or things like that. So I'd, I'd connect with, and maybe it's, it's one of his teachers who would just be the, the sponsor to post the project onto our site, but if that then involves you coming in and working with these students through that at the school as an after-school program or, or something like that, that would be totally fine. Um, we just need that individual educator at that specific school because when a project gets fully funded on our site, those materials become the property of that school. And, and we notify the principal 
and that's why it's important that everything's kind of tied to a specific school. Um, does that? I, I hope that might give a, a decent workaround or solution to to your situation. Um, but if not, again, I'm Kirk at DonorsChoose.org, and I'm happy to chat with you more after the call um, about ways we could make it work for you. Yeah, I think that would be great because Jill had responded that, they, that the kids all go to different schools, so maybe you all can and talk through um, if there are any other options. Um, I, but thank you, Jill. That's the kind of thing that I think is helpful, and it's a great opportunity for you all to be able to share these ideas you have and see what options that are available to you. Um, I want to go ahead with this first question and so that we can have a chance for um, Jeannie to share a little bit about the CS for All Consortium. So I'm going to do the same thing as I did before. Hopefully you all were able to see that um, when I share the PowerPoint the first time. Um, and now it's not giving me an option. Just one second. Um, so, Jimmy, once I get it up on the screen, you're, oh, you're welcome to go ahead and start talking once I finish, and then um, do let me know, um, you know, when you're ready for me to advance slides, and I'm happy to do so. Sure. Oh, great. Why don't you go ahead and start introducing as I work through the technology. <laughs> It is one of those <laughs> it, it definitely fails when you actually need it to work, Melissa. <laughs> so, exactly. Great. And when we're um, talking about computer science. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, once again, my name is Jumi Song, and I'm the Senior Program Manager for the cs for All Consortium. The cs for All Consortium um, actually only launched this past September at the White House cs for All Summit. Uh, we are essentially a NSF grant funded project via uh, CSNYC, uh, who acts as our, the incubators and co-chairs of the consortium. So the consortium acts as a hub for the National Computer Science for All movement that works to enable all students in grades 12, K through 12 to achieve CS literacy as an integral part of their education experience. The consortium sets a collective agenda together with its membership to help schools and districts provide all students with rigorous K-12 computer science education, serve as a platform for connecting diverse stakeholders, provide support to new and developing initiatives, and to track and share progress, and finally, communicate about the work to local and national audiences. So the consortium is a membership organization. We currently have uh, a, a little over 350 uh, members, including 173 content providers. So these are uh, PD providers, curriculum divide, providers, et cetera. Um, 82 uh, education associations, so state school districts and aggregated education groups like ESAP. And finally, about 102 funders and supporters and researchers. Just to clarify, membership to the consortium is absolutely Absolutely free. Uh, we just require uh, members to fill out a short application online and just be able to show that they do work in the K through 12 CS education space. So when we launched uh, five to six months ago, uh, we realized the CS education landscape in the U.S. is a bit messy. There's a lot of different organizations and stakeholders doing a lot of different things. Some organizations recreating the wheel, um, and it's just a little hard to navigate through. Um, so instead of just jumping in and trying to say, like, this is what everybody should be doing, we want to take a step back and see, like, what are our members actually doing? What resources are already available? And what are the gaps? What do our members need in order to move forward in the work in a more impactful way? So. Yeah, we took a step back and decided to do a needs assessment, uh, which was done in two parts. First, uh, we analyzed the information, information we gathered through the membership form to identify what each organization is doing and what they wanted through uh, a, a group such as the consortium. 
And finally, we actually just did a bunch of interviews and focus groups. We interviewed about 150 of our members to really dive in a bit deeper to see what exactly are they working on, what are their biggest challenges, and what do they need. So through that needs assessment, we then identified three priority areas that the consortium will be tackling. Uh, first, uh, building strategic, helping to build strategic connections. Two, uh, focus on knowledge and resource dissemination. And three, district consultation and support. Uh, so going back, um, looking at the first priority, strategic connections. How are we going to help our members make strategic connections? Uh, we've identified four areas that, uh, three programs that we'll be helping uh, launching to our members. First, all members of our, the consortium will be invited to join the cs for all Slack community. This is a way for our members to directly interact uh, with each other. The Slack community, you'll be able to log in at any time ping other members uh, just, or ping the entire group, ask for help, for resource guidance, or request partners for collaboration. Second, we are hosting the K-12 CS School District and University Pledges. For any school district that submits a pledge, we will then follow up. Uh, it just, we will just need to complete a form online. Um, and we will t request some information about where you are in your, your school district, where your school district is in the implementation process of CS education. We will then use that information to put you in a cohort of other school districts in a similar phase where you could then interact with one another and be able to ask for resources, just discuss um, uh, and build a community. Um, a lot of times it's maybe one teacher in a single school district trying to figure it out for their, all their students. Um, and they're dealing with a lot of the same problems. What curriculum should we do? What PD providers should we be using? Um, so we thought, why not help bring people together um, who are in similar phases so they could ask help and not have to use such a lonesome process. Uh, third, we will also be um, hosting themed community calls. The, our next community call will be March uh, 21st, which will actually focus on professional development. Um, each community call uh, will have a theme where we will invite some of our consortium members to present their, some of their content, and then also ask a teacher or school district to um, give real-life examples of how they've actually used uh, those resources. Um, okay. Finally, we'll also be uh, launching a CTE working group, which will be is a working group of a few industry partners that we've identified um, to help identify. Besides the proper CTE pathways for students. Uh, Moving on to the next slide, knowledge and resource dissemination. Uh, we did launch our website, www.csforall.org, which we hope will end up being a great resource of um, all the content um, that's available through our members. Also, we will, every month, we will be featuring a featured story, which gives us deep dive and insight into the work of our consortium members. There will also be having practices of research uh, where uh, researchers are asked to submit research proposals that, have, uh, that will be able to be used by uh, members of the consortium, particularly teachers. And third, uh, fourthly, we will be uh, mapping content providers to the K-12 CS framework, uh, which hopefully will be in addition to our um, website um, over the next year. Um, next slide, our third and final priority or area is district consultation and support. Through the consortium, we will be doing a state membership drive where we are hoping to get at least one school district from each of our, uh, 50 states and other U.S. Uh, territories to become a member of the consortium. Uh, we will also be hosting office hours, which launched this week, uh, which is available to, to all consortium members. Um, for them to sign up um, to just dial in and provide, um, ask for real-time uh, assistance for any questions that they may have in terms of CS implementation and so forth. Uh, 
Finally, uh, we will be doing district and state case studies. Through the needs assessment, it became very clear that what our members wanted was real-life examples of how peak others have implemented CS education in their schools. So we will be providing, um, looking uh, more closely at schools who have successfully implemented CS education to see how they did it, um, if they could go back in time, what would they do differently, and to share best practices, which uh, we will then turn to case studies and a list of best practices that we could share more broadly with the community. So, um, if you are not a member of the consortium, we do encourage you to sign up. Uh, individual teachers actually are not allowed to be members of the consortium. However, we do encourage teachers to ask their school district to become a member. Uh, once your school district is a member, any teacher within that school district would be um, allowed to leverage our resources. And that is all that I have to present. Do you have any questions? Thank you, Jumi. And, and that was, the, you, you touched on one of my questions I was going to ask um, on behalf of the teachers on this call, which was, so if I'm an individual teacher, if I'm not sure if my district is involved or I want to get my district involved so that, you know, I can, by virtue of the district or organization, get, you know, access to this great support, what do you recommend they do? What's the best way to make that happen? Yes. Um, I would encourage the teacher to uh, reach out to their school district um, to have someone in their school district apply to be a consortium member because once the, cons uh, the school district is a member, each school and teacher within that district would then be, um, be able to have access to all the resources. And, and if you're not sure if your school district is a member, uh, feel free to email me directly. Uh, you can also check out our website. Um, we have a members page. Uh, there are a few members who aren't listed just because of some lag time in collecting their logo and so forth. Um, but if you're unsure if your school is a, uh, is a member, feel free to uh, email me directly. And additionally, if you ever need a resource um, to encourage someone from your school district to, uh, to apply to become a member, feel free to reach out to me as well. I'd be happy to connect with you and uh, provide you with some email templates and so forth that you could then share with um, the appropriate point of contact at the school district level. Thank you so much, Jumi. I do appreciate that. Um, so in getting into our second question, um, this goes out to the full panel here, so to Jumi, Kirk, to Kia as well. Um, as we all know, a teacher's life is very busy. The easier it is to access resources or tap into funding opportunities, the greater the likelihood of them availing the opportunity. Can you help elaborate on how teachers and schools can access resources and opportunities? And this was touched on a little bit. So, Takiya, maybe we can start here with you um, sharing a little bit about how you approached um, your first um, opportunity with Donors Choose. Hi. Hello, everyone. Um, speaking as a teacher, when you hear of a grant and looking at having to write for the grant, um, that shuns away 98% of the competition. But donor's choose is totally different um, where you're looking at a grant. It's not a 30-page thesis that you have to write. Um, the grant consists of two to three paragraphs at the most. And in those paragraphs, when you're writing the grant, you're um, talking about the materials that you would like to have for your students and how you will use those materials. So as someone who was not, uh, I'll say I was always a basic writer, um, my writing has improved since writing Donors Choose Grants. Um, I'm writing longer um, for different things, but it's, it's, it's much easier than, you know, one would think. Um, I just led a PD um, for our county um, on writing Donors Choose Grants, and that was a big question that teachers had of, you know, I don't have time to do something extra. Um, so I wrote with them. Uh, my PD lasted 45 minutes. So during that time, I had a slideshow with about 20 slides, and we had time for me to go through my slideshow, and everyone there wrote their first grant, um, which took 
It takes me on average of about 10 minutes, but teaching the class, it took us about 20 minutes to write their first grant and to submit it to Donors Choose. So it's not hard at all. Um, so that will, I mean, that fear of writing a grant, um, knowing that it is a short um, snippet of just the materials and what you will need for it that knocks out, you know, so many of the, the time um, constraints that people assume comes with um, writing a grant. Thank you so much, Takia. Um, Kurt, are there resources on the site itself that teachers can tap into if they have questions or how to help us walk through that process? If um, I mean, we're lucky we've got Takia here and people can ask her questions directly. But you know, once time goes on or folks are listening to the recording, if they're not sure, where would you suggest that they start? Yeah, and, and feel free to ask Takia any questions. She's had so many things funded for different types of materials and the PD opportunities and stuff. But um, I'd encourage, when, when you go to donorschoose.org teachers, that's kind of the place for teachers to start to create your account. And what you do is, even if you don't want to use the site today, um, I'd encourage you to go create an account because then you're in our system and we can let you know about the different um, opportunities that are out there. Because again, our site can be used for really anything you might dream of for your students. But the best opportunity and what Takiya I know is taking advantage of a lot is these partner funding opportunities when it's someone like the Infosys Foundation saying this type of project is half off or it could be when you know a funder like Target says hey we want to fund health and fitness projects and they're going to be fully funded um, so go post a project like this you know once you create an account in your nurse system you'll get emails um, not too often because we really want to respect your, your inboxes but about um, any really compelling funding opportunities. And you'll also get our monthly teacher newsletter. And that is a targeted newsletter that might give you tips and tricks on how to continue to have success on donorschoose.org, other things you should know about. But it also gives you a specially um, kind of focused list of those funding opportunities based on where you teach and what you teach. Um, so if a partner only wants to do an incentive to fund um, you know, computer science, you might hear about that. But if it's only computer science in California, you're only going to hear about that if you're a California teacher. But you'll have this specially kind of cataloged list of opportunities just in our monthly newsletter just by creating an account. So that's oftentimes the best first step of getting started. But it's really sky's the limit. I encourage teachers to go to the site and look at the projects that are live there now. And I was going to say that, yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think, yeah, I'm sure has done that before, right? Like search for the subject area or the type of thing you're interested in and see what other teachers are doing and borrow their ideas. You can even see their specific shopping carts for their projects to say, oh, they're going to teach this unit on this. Um, what? Oh, they're using a kind of a programming thing I didn't even know existed, but because you can drill down and see another teacher's cart, you can actually maybe borrow from them and, and learn from what they're doing. That is a wonderful idea. I love that and wouldn't have thought to do it. So thank you for sharing. Um, I want to skip ahead. Uh, we kind of already addressed a little bit with some challenges, but wanted to, t to talk a little bit about success stories. Um, yeah. Jumi, from you, um, I'll give you a chance to kind of think about this because yours may not be as evident. Um, <laughs> something comes to mind, so I'll give you a moment. Um, I'd love to hear from you from the consortium of ways and successful stories of how the consortium is able to get people, organizations, districts, et cetera, connected together to, to make things happen. So I'll come back to you on that in just a second. But Takia, tell us a little bit. You've talked, you've talked a bit, but give us kind of like your okay. most exciting story as a result of one of your wonderful projects that you've had funded. Okay. Um, something that's um, that one of the most successful stories is for my school this year. Um, through Donor Shoes Grants, we've raised over $90,000 um, um, worth, well, we've received over $90,000 worth of materials. Um, and it all started with um, last year, looking at Donor Shoes, I learned about Computer Science Week. Um, and I taught second grade last year, and my second graders learned how to use code.org. We learned how to create games and just different things on um, during that week. So computer science week came up. So my second graders led the school with 
coding with the hour of code. So my second graders went to each classroom and they taught grades pre-K through six how to code using um, <laughs> gamesoncode.org. So of course they felt very special being able to teach some sixth graders as well as teachers how to code. Um, so an opportunity I that it. I saw. <laughs> Thank you. An opportunity came up on Donors Choose where there was a match offer from Emphasis Foundation USA. Um, and there was an opportunity to go to L.A., went to Harvey Mudd College. Um, there was a, a PD called Bootstrap. Um, and Bootstrap um, is a program that integrates algebra, um, data science, computer science principles, and video gaming. So. When I saw that, I'm like, wow. So I went, I went there. I wrote a grant for that one um, on donor shoes, and it was selected to receive a half-off match. Um, I donated a little bit to it, and then people who I don't know um, from New York and New Hampshire and you know many states funded the funded the opportunity. So I took that class with about 30 other people. And everyone there got their project funded from people they didn't know. So we were talking about, you know, in the class, we were talking about, you know, just the joy of donor shoes and how, you know, it was great to have that opportunity to attend, you know, that PD in another state. And again, I'm in Maryland, so I was able to travel to Los Angeles for this. Um, but some of the projects that um, we've had funded, um, I was able to get a one-to-one -one classroom with technology. So every student in my class have access to a um, to a tablet. So we have the Kindle Fires in our classroom, as well as Chromebooks, as well as a Chromebook cart. Um, I also was able to host a family STEM night where um, my STEAM club was able to um, teach their parents as well as their siblings and peers how to make slime, so causing chemical reactions. They were able to fly drones. They were able to code um, robots. We have Dash and Dot and all of the little trinkets with them um, through Donor's Shoes. Um, after I did a PD, six other teachers in my school also have a one-to-one -one, um, technology classroom. So every student in that classroom has a Kindle Fire that they use on a daily basis. You know, as a teacher, it's hard when you have five Chromebooks and your whole class of 30 have to share that. So, you know, because of Donors Choose and the grants that they offer, my students do not have to share. We're, you know, each student has their own um, tablet or Chromebook in our classroom. So those are just some of the projects that um, were funded through Donors Choose. Thank you so much, Takia. Um, Jimmy, a story that you would share? Yeah, um, maybe I'll just clarify some of the resources that um, the consortium offers to our members, um, specifically uh, resources that the teachers on this call could probably use um, once they become a member of the consortium. Um, this is, uh, the office hours are a great way for people, uh, for members to just drop in, ask a few questions that need, and get real time real-time assistance. Uh, for instance, we get a lot of questions about like what curriculum or what PD should we use. Uh, so two weeks ago, Leanne and I were on a call with, uh, with a, a school district, um, I believe from West Virginia, um, where they were trying to be like, there's so many options out there. How do we decide what to choose? Um, and rather than sending them to a website with a list of a bunch of different options for them to shift to, because as you mentioned, teachers don't have a lot of time. And it's so time consuming to click through all the lists and trying to figure out which is best for their students. Um, so by so setting up a one-hour conversation, um, Leanne and I will be able to just ask a few questions about uh, their student um, about the school and help her identify a, a short list um, a few options for her based on her needs were. Um, so that might be a very quick example of how a member of the consortium could um, have successfully helped out a school district. Thank you so much, Jumi. Um, I realize we're getting down toward the end of our time together, and so I wanted to, to provide the opportunity for those from the audience if there are specific questions that you have. I know people have been asking them throughout, but does anyone else on the call have a general question for any of our presenters? We'd be happy to hear from you.
now's your chance. You have this wonderful group of people and uh, very resourceful folks. Anyone, if you have a question, please feel free to add it now in the chat window or to speak it orally. We'd be happy to help you. Hi, it's Takia. Um, my comment or statement is for Jill. I know Jill spoke about um, starting a group um, with um, the students that she's working with, and that's kind of how I started my after-school program. Um, and it was just me and 30 students who were just interested in learning how to code, which has led to um, my stream coordinator for the county asking me to do robotics at our school as well as um, being the STEAM coordinator at school. So it just goes to show that you know, even though I'm doing it for, I was doing it for enjoyment, someone else saw it, um, and then it opened the door for other opportunities. So um, hopefully Jill will find the, the resource from her child's school or just some schools where the kids are, and you know, that can form different relationships and partnerships. Absolutely. Thank you, Takia, for sharing that. I had a call earlier this week with another computer science teacher who um, started his program in his high school the very same way. Started off as an after-school coding club. Um, he had just kind of happened to attend a workshop personally that he was interested in. He got the kind of coding bug and decided to do something with his students. And it went from being an after-school club to then being a sort of semi-elective to a full-blown elective, and then now um, they're looking into having kind of a whole course of study in the high school with computer science. So that's, that's definitely um, a, a great uh, feedback to share, and thank you for, for offering that up. Um, to give voice to Mark's question, he's asked, is there a cost for our school district to become a member of CS for All Consortium? And Jimmy responded, no, there's no cost to join. Um, so, um, that's great, and you definitely, um, if you haven't had a chance to, you can check out the website. Another great resource that the consortium can provide is um, you can look for, kind of search the site based on the type of organization, like if they're PD providers um, or um, various other options that they give you. So it can be kind of similar to what Kirk said earlier. It may just be an opportunity for you to learn about things you just didn't even know existed. Um, so that can be a great resource for, for you all. I wanted to, you're welcome to continue posting um, if you have questions in the window there, but before we close out, I wanted to see if um, Jumi, Kirk, and Takia could leave, um, close out with like one piece of advice um, to teachers um, as they're thinking about like how they can find those resources and how they can find some support. So a piece of advice that you would give those folks um, about how to move forward. I'll jump in first. I guess mine is really, even if you're not interested in, in creating a project tonight, go on the site, register, create an account, because that's where you're going to hear about some of these great opportunities um, as they come up with our with our different corporate partners and foundations. But the the best thing you do is actually go create a project for, for anything you might need um, and, and put it out there and take that risk, because um, like Takia shared, you'll, you'll most likely have success on it. Um, and it can really be for whatever you want. But um, avail yourself of our help center. We have a great teacher customer service team. You have my contact information now if you need it. But go register tonight, and hopefully um, you'll, you'll see the opportunities coming down the way. Hi, this is Jimmy. Um, I guess my advice is to encourage your school districts to become a member of the consortium. Once you are a member, again, there's no cost for membership. Uh, we'll then be able to be able to more closely provide you with free of our resources, invite you to our office hours, which again, hopefully we'll be able to help you cut down some time of doing individual searches on Google, and we'll be able to provide you with some real um, real-time assistance. And also we'll be able to put, uh, assign you to a cohort working group um, where you'll then be able to connect with other teachers um, who are facing some of the similar problems that you may be having and be able to plug into a community where you could ask questions, share resources, um, through this process. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, hi. Um, 
A piece of advice I would leave is just to check out DonorsChoose.org site and just look at other materials that other teachers have received. So just look at the projects and just learn the site. So just click around to look at the site. So whatever interests you, you can type it in. Let's say computer science. Just type in computer science and you'll see what comes up, whether it's a PD or whether it's materials or things like that. So that can kind of lead your way and what interests you. Or even form a list of what your interests are for your classroom and then go into the search bar for to Donors Choose to look at it. There's also Facebook um, groups for Donors Choose where teachers share um, ideas and interests um, that they use in their classrooms um, and different tips. So we have our own little community on there as well. Thank you. Well, thank you all so much. This has been really um, tremendous. I'm glad that we were able to get this scheduled and have a, a second revisit um, if you will, of um, this important idea. There's so many wonderful things that are happening in many schools and districts and states even are getting on board with supporting CS. But um, as I said earlier, I think Takia is the only teacher I've ever heard say in a public school <laughs> that that had all the resources that we need. So we know that this is a struggle for so many of you all. We're so grateful to have um, these resources that are out there to help um, to find, to help you find the funding and, and, and support that you need in your classroom. Um, for us and what we provide with CS for All Teachers, we did just want to share a couple upcoming activities. In April, we have two webinars. One that we haven't even yet got on our calendar yet, so you're hearing this first. So NC WIT um, is um, the organization that's dedicated to women in technology, and they have a number of wonderful programs and resources that they also offer. Um, and so we have Leslie Aronson who's going to join us in April to share about that. So it's another great chance for you to um, learn about, you know, things that you need. One of the wonderful things that they do um, is something called Counselors in Computing where they, they help to train guidance counselors on computer science so that they can better help to direct the students when they're registering for classes and making sure that they're, you know, kind of leading them to these opportunities. So that's just one little tidbit, and there's lots of other great things that NC WIT provides, and so you'll learn more about that on April the 18th. On April 26th, um, Gail Chapman, who um, is one of the leaders of the Exploring Computer Science, she's going to do a general topic about reflecting on the year um, and really kind of thinking about, you know, taking some time to look back on the past year, what you've learned in teaching your CS classes or your CS um, incorporating computational thinking into your cor other courses, and really help to kind of think about and, and um, reflect back on this year to help you plan for um, work that you'll likely